So you've got the Labor conference that begins today. It's virtual. It's not going to have the fireworks or flashpoints this year. Sounds like it's going to be boring. <laughs> Labor conferences are never boring, but this one will be different, that's for sure. Uh, we've all had to do things differently in the last 12 months. Uh, a lot of us have been stuck on long Zoom conferences. Hopefully this will be uh, more interesting than some of those those boring Zoom conferences a lot of, a lot of us yep. have been stuck in. So you can mute someone if you don't like what they're saying, Jason? <laughs> You certainly can do that. Um, <laughs> it reminds me of uh, when I was crook and I had to miss a week uh, from Parliament a couple of years ago and I was sitting in the lounge room. I was able to mute Josh Frydenberg and Scott Morrison when they droned <laughs> on with those long Dorothy Dixes. So you can do that. But uh, you know, the whole idea here is to, is to make the party platform shorter and simpler, uh, yep. get us ready for the next election. And hopefully by doing this online, it'll mean that a lot of party members and a lot of people that are interested in... in the development of public policy will be interested in tune in over the next two days. OK, well, well, as Trudy just reported there, Bill Shorten's policy platform went beyond 300 pages. This time it's uh, it's just a smidgen over 100 pages. So yeah. is that what you mean by simpler messages? You're taking fewer policies to the next election? Yeah, well, one of the mistakes we made at the last election was too many policies. It was cluttered. It wasn't clear. We want to send a simple message to the Australian people at the next election about our plans to create more jobs, build a fairer society, raise the living standards of all Australians, make life a bit easier. Uh, and the platform, in its essence, is all about that. And by making it shorter and simpler, that's just one way to send a message to the Australian people that we get it. And we're preparing policies now that, will, will, that are all about making sure that we create more jobs and raise the living standards of all Australians. OK, well, some of those leaked details have emerged this morning and um, I'm sure Anthony Albanese will be talking about this later on, but uh, it references a, a $15 billion plan to, to revive manufacturing in Australia, to basically build ships, trains, cars, etc. in Australia again. How are you going to do that? Well, Pete, you know, we're going through now still the biggest economic crisis since World War II. And in the aftermath of World War II, we had to rebuild Australia. And, you know, to be frank, we need to do that again now. Uh, we've seen massive drops in employment over the last 12 months. Unemployment is still high. Uh, but we've, in particular, seen a big drop in the number of apprentices and big drops in manufacturing. Uh, half the jobs that have been created in the last 10 years have been in our CBDs, in, in the CBD in Sydney and in the CBD in Melbourne. But in the outer suburbs and the, and the regions, we've seen atrophy. We've seen lots of job losses, uh, particularly in, in blue-collar jobs. What Albo is talking about here today is a fund to reverse that, to create more jobs. Uh, you know, there's, there's plenty of places in Australia where people used to have a job working in construction or working in manufacturing or food processing that are gone now. Um, you know, if we're serious about learning the lessons of the last 12 months, then we're going to have to turn that around. The problem is, and, and why so many jobs, <coughs> in, in particular the manufacturing sector, have moved offshore is because wages are too high. Businesses can't afford it. So how do you just reverse that? Well, we've had this conversation before, Pete, sure. about you know, specialising in areas where we're better than the rest of the world, but also recognising that there are things that just frankly need to be made here in Australia. Um, think about this. Uh, before the pandemic, the two places around the world that made the most masks, surgical masks, were Wuhan and Milan, ground zero for the pandemic. We had to learn fast, learn how to make everything from hand sanitizer to ventilators. The last 12 months should be a lesson to us that we need to make more here. Now, you know, whether that's, whether that's masks or ventilators or whether it's making sure that we don't just dig lithium out of the ground in Western Australia or anywhere else in the country, but can, but can value add and turn that into cathodes and anodes that make batteries, that should be the challenge that we meet in policies like this. Well, the government has put on 55,000 jobs that it's created in the last three months. That's just in the manufacturing sector. How much more can you do? Oh, well, you know, for everybody out there that is still unemployed or underemployed, they'd say a lot more. You know, there's about 2 million Aussies that don't have a job or don't have enough work at the moment. There's about 100,000 fewer people working in manufacturing today than there were 10 years ago. I can take you out to my electorate in Western Sydney, Pete, and show you the empty factories. There's a lot more that the government...